My name is Alan Munson. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer of Parlevel Systems. I was a vending operator before I started uh, Parlevel Systems, and uh, well, Parlevel does a number of wonderful things in the technology side of, of vending in itself. One of the things that we do is we strive to increase micro markets in our space. You guys know that micro markets over the past half dozen to a dozen years have really just taken over our industry. It's the growth engine for vending in general. And I tell vending operators all the time that, you know, where millennials and where younger people want to be at vending is at now. So, you know, um, uh, Micro markets have just increased that. It's all about convenience. I want it now, and I want it the way I want to pay for it. So today, we're going to talk about micro markets and how to sell micro markets. So again, I used to be a vending operator, and being one is uh, well. That's why I don't have any here today. Uh, it's very stressful. It's uh, very, very difficult. You're managing uh, a lot of employees and putting out fires. And if you guys happen to be vending operators. Uh, best of luck in what you do. Uh, so we're going to talk about micro markets and how how do you get those micro market accounts that you would like? Um, <clears throat> this part I don't know how it's. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. So I'm, I want to take it all the way back to the beginning with you guys, okay? So we're going to talk about the phases of micromarkets and how to sell them, but there's definitely some groundwork before just going and pitching a micromarket account. You can't just show up and think that it's going to work, right? So what a lot of operators do is they back into micromarkets, right? I don't, by, by show of hands, how many of you actually have micromarkets now today? Do the micromarkets that you have today, was it because a customer pushed you into doing them? More than likely, the answer is yes. Oh, awesome, Barry. Um, but, but more than likely, most of our customers, they get into micro markets because they're afraid of losing one of their best accounts. Well, hopefully, um, I'll be able to show you today how you can avoid all that and actually be proactive in, into getting micro markets, OK? So there's some groundwork that you need to lay out before going into micro markets. This is a talk that you need to have with yourself. Okay, so you need to identify optimal accounts that you're comfortable with. So before going into it, you have to have an idea on what accounts you'll be okay with, right? Public versus private. Are you comfortable with that? Are you okay with that? Sometimes we talk about theft a lot, right, with micro markets. <clears throat> so this is something that you'll have to be okay with. Blue collar versus white collar. Employee size. For vending, I didn't like to place a snack machine if I had less than 75 people there. But I knew that going in, right? You guys should know this already, being vending operators, what you're comfortable with. Some of you guys don't want to place a food machine unless it has 250 employees or more, right? So you know these things. In micro markets, you have to do the exact same thing. Are you okay with temporary workers? You know, full-time versus part-time. How much part-time, how much temp workers are you comfortable with? In and out traffic. I had a customer ask me the other day, uh, a car dealership wanted a micro market. That car dealership had a person in the front that was a receptionist that would be right next to the micro market. Are you comfortable with that? Some people are, some people aren't, it just depends. And then geography, just like in vending, you can't, you can't have 200 miles that you're driving all over the place. Micro markets, while they do have less, they do have less breakdowns. There's, there's no mechanics involved in it. You still have to go fill that micro market. And micro market sales typically be, they're typically a little bit higher than vending. So you have to be comfortable with how many times you're gonna go service that micro market, say in a week or in a month. Next, you need to create a target list. You can create target lists by purchasing them. You can do it, I, I did it whenever I first started my vending company. I went to the Chamber of Commerce and just said, hey, can I have your top 100 employers in my county? I was actually dumb enough to call all of them and just see, I thought, well, one of them will tell me yes, and, and two of them didn't. So, um, look at your current customer list. Almost all operators do this today. So, okay, I've got, a few, I've got a few customers that have 125 employees, 175 employees. It's a safe bet because it's, it, geographically it's close to me. I'm comfortable with theft piece, you know, because there's not a bunch of in-out traffic. Um, Google searches, 
and then drive-bys, right? So if you guys have drivers or if you drive home, if you're a vending nerd like me, on your drive home, you go, oh, man, they're actually building a new place there. Man, one of these days they need to stop in there, right? But either way, you need to create a list, and these are some ways in order for you guys to do just that. Next, you need to create the actual sales presentation. So sit down, put some slides together, put a PowerPoint together, and say, these are the differentiators. These are the things that separate me from my competition. You can have food, maybe it. Maybe, maybe it's technology, right? Maybe the, the supplier that you're going for has technology that's better than your competition that's out in the field. Maybe it's your service itself. Can you dedicate yourself to showing up, showing up on Monday morning to drop off fresh sandwiches whenever nobody else will? Right? Those are the things that you need to have in your presentation in order to make sure that you're getting your point across to the actual location whenever it's time to pitch them. So we, we talk internally all the time about the actual sales funnel in par level. Right? So in the sales funnel itself, when you start off, you have, you're very wide, right? You're just contacting people. I'm simply just cold calling or I'm sending emails or I'm relying on, on my own website to drum up business for me, right? But you have, a, you have a big sales funnel in the beginning and then it's connecting to people and then it's actually being able to book a meeting all the way down to, and they're all coming out of the funnel as you go along, right? This is just sales tactics in general, but that's basically what you're doing here. You're just creating that sales funnel for your people to go through. So a highlight what makes your company stand out. Again, like I said, technology is a big piece. Food and service, those are just some things that come to mind. In vending, right, it, we all basically have the same machines and the same products, same trucks and that sort of thing. But even today, you guys sit and you think about, okay, what is it that I can do different than my competition? Because they're, they're, they're out there just like I am, you know. Book a meeting, schedule an in-house demonstration. Booking a meeting in their house is imperative. And I'll show you guys a few steps or a few things that we've done in order to make sure that, that we've been successful in doing it. And then finally, performing a demonstration. I try to keep it to about an hour. I'll tell them it's an hour. Hopefully we stay for three. Those are always nice. <clears throat> creating material around the, uh, creating your marketing material around the slides that you're creating is a must. So when I say marketing material, I mean anything that you're giving out to that prospective customer. It, it, it spend a little bit of money on it, right? Chris, our brochures are a dollar thirty-four a piece, right? Buck thirty-four. I hand them out to you guys all day long at the booth, and hopefully, somebody will make that up, right? So that's the whole point. But you guys, it's not hard to go down to your local print shop and create some marketing material. They can be as simple as a postcard size, or in our case, we do we do a big color thing but it's, it's not that expensive. But it needs to mirror each other, right? Because when you sit down, the slides that you create, your slide deck, basically, and your marketing material need to match the same. Because once you get done with that meeting, you guys are only gonna retain 20% of what I'm saying, unless you're writing it down. It's the same thing there. They're gonna go in and they're gonna go, oh yeah, that was my hot button I was looking for. That was the hot button, and he said that. But if your marketing material matches what your slides say, then when they go back and think about it, those, those cues will come up to them and they'll remember, oh yeah, that's right, they can do whatever. They can do subsidized accounts for all of my employees. So next I'd like to give you guys some tips on the actual meeting itself. In order for you guys to have a wonderful meeting, you have to have products there. Take a basket, fill it up with the products that you offer, take samples with you. If you have unique products to your geographic area, that's what I would do. Even if you start out small, go to Sam's Club and get some kombucha. Go get some organic yogurt. I'm telling you it works. Leave that basket there, by the way, which is another tip. Leave it there so you can come back later on. But have that basket there, and these are the things that differentiate me. If you run a commissary, or if you have, if you have partnered with a catering company, perhaps, right? Bring some of those foods with you. Uh, also, <clears throat> uh, make sure that you brought those marketing materials with you that you just created, of course, and then I suggest that you guys bring your kiosk. They want to play and feel what it is that you're offering. If I've sat in sales meetings with a kiosk and a bas basket of goods, they want to see what that checkout process is like for their employees. They want to see what it's like if your supplier offers an app on the phone where their, where their employees can check out with. They want to be able to experience that, so have your smartphone allow them to play with it because 
while this is exciting for you guys, it's also exciting for them. You know, I, I talked to an employee the other day that said, this is the biggest technology advancement in my break room, and I've worked here 15 years. So for them, it's something brand new. They've had vending machines there before. They, had, or they didn't have anything at all. And so now you're coming in and you're giving them something to be proud of and something that they like. This is a huge sell for HR. And most of the people that you talk to that have 125, 150 employees will be HR people. And they really want, just like we do, we want to make sure our employees have a great experience. It's the exact same thing for them. And, and part of that experience is the checkout process in order to buy stuff. This is why micro markets have taken off and vending is static where it is is because the checkout process itself in vending machines can feel like it's cumbersome. So when you're ready to present, bring a laptop, right? You have your slides that's ready to go. <clears throat> bring your business cards. And then don't forget every presentation that you get in a boardroom will have a different projector. So make sure you bring all the necessary connections for that projector. Visualizing the micro market in their space is a must, right? Painting the picture for them is great. If you have a supplier that will give you guys mock-ups, lean on them. Lean on them to give them to you. If you're going to go pitch, let's say AutoZone, I'm a, I want to go pitch an AutoZone distribution center that's got 250 employees, I'm bringing with me an actual image of a micro market that I would put in there. And it's going to have the three coolers, and it's going to have the freezer, and it's going to have the kiosk and two four-foot snack racks. And as I'm going through my presentation, I'm walking them through the experience and how their employees uh, visualize, or how they would visualize their employees through that checkout process. So there are other things that you need to cover during the meeting to make sure you're on the same page. These are probably the most important in the whole thing. Because you can agree on the micro market being great in the products and the service and all these things. But if you don't cover how long the agreement is that you're comfortable with and what they're comfortable with, remember a micro market can, can span anywhere from $3,000 to $50,000 depending on the type of location. So if you're investing that kind of money, you want to make sure your ROI is set so that if something does happen, terrible happen, at least you have recouped your money into that hardware. You guys should sit down and talk about theft, right? So how are they going, how is HR going to treat theft in their micro market, right? Will they fire their employees? Will they give them a warning? Um, how are you gonna do it? Some of my operators, what they do is, they'll say, okay, listen, we'll treat this like a CVS. If I have 5% theft, I'm gonna go up and nickel on all my items. So, so you, you know, Mr. Location, I don't wanna go up on prices. But Walmarts don't close down. They don't quit building Walmarts because people steal. <laughs> they don't do that. They just go up on prices in order to make sure that, that that gets covered. So a lot of my customers do the exact same thing. Making sure timelines match. You guys do this in vending now, right? Or when is the old people leaving? When are they leaving? When are we coming in? How soon do you want it? This is also a great talk to have with your suppliers. How fast can I get snack racks? How fast can I get coolers or the kiosk itself? One of the major things that you guys should do is grand openings. Grand openings will allow you to introduce yourself to the location. You can also teach your, your new customers how to check out. Um, for you guys that were in my talk yesterday, I, um, I'm sorry to repeat myself, but one of the things that I covered in that micro market session was when I was an operator doing vending, I was trying to capture 50%, 55% of all the employees once a week to use the vending machines. I felt like I was doing okay. In micro markets, it's high 80s. So you should have high 80s, 88, 89% of all the employees using the micro market at least once a week. You're still gonna have top in customers, right? You're still gonna have the customers that rely on micro markets multiple times per day. We love those customers, but I at least wanna get the vast majority of the employees to use the micro market at least once a week. In micro markets, they're a little bit different than vending. You need to discuss internet requirements. Are they going to provide internet for you? Are you going to need a hotspot? If they're going to provide internet for you through LAN, are there any firewalls or protocols that you have to go through? This can be challenging, but um, you need to make sure that you have a supplier that's willing to go, with that, go through that with you because it is a pain point from time to time. Product mix, obviously when you're talking about all the different products, unique products that you guys carry, you should also talk about those different products and how you adjust your quantities or par levels in your micro market depending on how fast or how slow products move. And then finally, 
uh, discussing the, the wallet system. So a lot of locations like to subsidize their employees' accounts. I would push this. So one of the things that I think the vast majority of, if not all micro market suppliers do is they allow uh, $10 on every employee's account every week or every month, right? This is great for the vending operator because if you land an account that has 100 employees, which is relatively small, but they put $20 a month on their wallet, well, now I've got a $2,000 location before they even purchase anything. So it's, I have guaranteed $2,000 is going to come in. Now, post-meeting, what are some of the things that you need to do after that meeting, assuming that you went out? So you had in your hand already a good look or a good feel on how the micro market will look according to the mock-up, but coming out of the meeting, it may be a little bit different. So deciding on that layout and signage, branding, and all these things is necessary <clears throat> because you don't want to throw your ROI way out of whack, right? You cannot have a $10,000 investment if a market is doing $400 a month. It just wouldn't make sense. And then, of course, make sure you're planogramming properly. If you don't retain any of this stuff and you get into micro markets, please do planogramming. <laughs> Some people don't, and it, I don't know, it drives me nuts. If, if you just thought for a second, if CVS didn't have a planogram, what would their store look like? It would be chaotic. It's not, it's not even possible. It's not even possible. So thinking that your driver is going to be able to stock a micro market properly without a planogram is just insanity. I don't understand it. So. Please come up with a great planogram and understand that. Also, your suppliers can help with this, right? Does your micro market racking have pegged items? Okay, how many rows of pegged items? Can I, can I get that from my food supplier? So making sure that your suppliers are on the same page as you is a key. You need to make sure that you receive your kiosk at least a week prior. Make sure that you're comfortable because on that grand opening, you're going to be walking those people through the checkout process. If your folks or yourself, if you don't know what that process is, well, you're going to look kind of silly standing up there trying to show everybody else. <clears throat> so make time to train with your supplier's customer success team, right? So your customer success, sorry, your supplier should have individuals that can sit down with you for an hour or two hour blocks and go over all of the things that you need to know in order to be successful, right? So how do I set up pricing in my micro market? How do I set up planograms in my micro market? Um, all, how do I set up wallets in my micro market? So th those things take time on your first one. And the first one's going to be miserable. <laughs> but after you do it, then it's so, so easy. It's not, it's not challenging at all after that. You need to put all the data in the back end, right? So whatever system that you're using, make sure that you're setting up all of your location information, your customer's information, your account information. If you're paying out uh, commissions or if it's subsidized, all those good things need to be put in the back end beforehand. You can, you can with most suppliers, you can set up uh, wallets beforehand. So you would simply just ask the HR person, can I please have all the work email addresses? Uh, your suppliers ought to be able to put that in in bulk. And then during that grand opening, you, you're simply just saying, hey, put in your email address, and then let's get your fingerprint connected, or let's get your badge, your employee badge connected, right? So they're already in the system. You just have to assign a methodology in order for them to check out easily. <clears throat> and finally, you, you, again, you have to know what that checkout process looks like. So installation of the shelving and coolers, you guys do this today, right? This is just ensuring that you and the location are on the same page. I had a customer that ordered a four-foot snack rack but forgot to measure the elevator. Elevator wasn't four feet. <laughs> I mean, you guys know this, right? You're in, you're in vending. We know, you know not to do this, um, but it slipped his mind. So um, he needed a two-foot, he needed two two-foot snack racks yesterday and uh, luckily we were we were okay with it but uh, just keep that in mind on the installation process also one one other piece is if your location is going to give you internet like LAN then make sure they're dropping that landline beforehand if you are using cloud hosted cameras make sure the internet is okay with this right because now you're shooting over big data pieces and cloud what I mean by cloud hosted is um, o over uh, online on the internet as opposed to DVR system you just want to make sure you have good internet for that uh, and then the grand opening itself, the grand opening is, this should be the time whenever you're actually connecting with customers. This may be 
one of the biggest sales drivers of a micro market because we never do this with vending. It's not like we go into we we put our place our vending machines and then we say, okay, come try them out. Let me show you how to check out. That doesn't happen. But in micro markets, you have to. And and I would say that if you're running, if they're running a second shift or a third shift, stay there. Stay there. Uh, for as long as you can to show those employees that checkout process and what that feels like and that looks like. I promise you, you'll get more uh, compliments on the new break room. You'll actually hear people saying thank you in vending. I don't know. Go figure. Right? That never happens before. <clears throat> uh, as you begin to sell items in your, in your micro market and you're servicing it or your driver servicing it, you need to set up an audit period. I would suggest doing it six weeks, eight weeks, but this all depends on, on how fast that product is moving. Oh, sorry, how, yeah, how fast that market is selling product. But you need to set up an accountability phase. So the way that you can detect theft in a micro market, the first thing that you'll be able to detect is when your driver says, the system says I should have had seven Snickers, but I only had four. Well, then we have a problem, right? And so <clears throat> then you'll begin to backtrack and look at cameras and all these things. You're not going to look at 24 hours of footage all the time, right? You're just going to do it whenever, an, whenever something pops up. But you need to do an audit relatively soon to identify if there's any potential problems. I've had customer, I had a customer the other day that said that one of his customers, he, he looked and he saw that he was 23 short in Dr. Pepper and he services an account every day. He missed that. Now it is Texas, right? In Texas we love Dr. Pepper. But, um, but 23 Dr. Peppers is a lot of Dr. Peppers to miss in one day. It was one person. <laughs> Somebody stole 23 Dr. Peppers in one day. Oh, and now I'm scaring you guys. But the point is, is that he was able to identify this and quickly, he quickly uh, be able to put, put a hold on it. Uh, item optimization is crucial. So doing your auditing, making sure your cash and your, if you do accept cash in your market, uh, and your product match is fantastic. But then you also need to make sure that you're optimizing your specific planograms. You know, Operators that, that haven't gotten into micro markets yet and they're still doing fresh food, for instance, think that fresh food is hard. It's not hard. And vending it is because you've got a carousel machine, the will of death, right? But uh, in, in, uh, in micro markets, it's just not quite that way. It's nice. It's presentable. However, establish par levels so that you can make sure that, you, you know, you're putting in two chef salads as opposed to six. We don't want to throw away food either. As a matter of fact, during the sales process, I tell the location this, right? Listen, Mr. Location. I want to stock everything that your employees want. That's how I make money. However, I also am a good steward of Mother Earth. And I don't want to throw away food that it took somebody to, to cut and prepare and bring it here only to throw it away. So if this happens, I'm either going to remove the product or significantly reduce the amount of this product in the micro market, and I guarantee you they're going to be okay with that. If you, if you formulate it that way, they're going to say, I completely understand. I don't want you to throw away food either. It's not about my money. It's, a, it's a, oh, I'm just a good person, and I don't want to throw away stuff, right? So they completely get that. But optimizing the planogram is a must. And it's a, it, you guys may do this in vending now, but certainly having a mix of product selection, right? You're rotating products in and out. It's nice. It keeps it updated and fresh. If you're, if you're dealing with a, a caterer or a, even a local restaurant, I have an operator that, um, that he does sushi. It's a busy market. He does sushi twice a week. So he has sushi Tuesday and sushi Friday. He, they, his customers pre-order the sushi. All he did was he walked into his favorite sushi restaurant and said, hey, I love your sushi, but I would love to sell this in my micro market. Can you package this? Absolutely. So now he puts sushi in his micro market. They pre-ordered. He brings a few more just in case people forgot to pre-order it. And they can grab it, scan it, and they're done. Last piece is repeat it, right? So you did it. You got it. Now it's time to go get another one. So now you've figured out the way in order to grab micro market accounts and then scale. And like I said, the first one is going to be challenging because, because you've never done it before. But once you do it once, it's all it takes. After that, you can keep rolling out with them. You need to have great suppliers that can help you along the way to make sure that you're on the right path. Call them, ask them questions on how you can be successful. This is, they, they, we do this all the time, right? We've done thousands of them, so we know what works and what doesn't work. Your supplier should do the same thing, specifically if you're brand new to micro market, micro markets themselves. Thank you, I hope you guys have a wonderful NAMA.